Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, write a vector with a given magnitude. And to do that, what we need to do is find the unit vector first. So again, you know, looking into our last video, we found the unit vector. And what's nice about defining the unit vector is we could find the vector that has the same direction but only has a magnitude of 1. And why that's helpful is one of the reasons for the problems like this. If I have this vector, 4 comma negative 2, now let's do that over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2, okay? This vector does not have a magnitude of 3. Let's figure out what the magnitude is of this vector. So if I find the vector, um, I guess let's find this magnitude of this vector. Let's call this w. So if I find the magnitude of my vector w, that's going to be 4 squared plus negative 2 squared, which equals 16 plus 4 which equals the square root of 20, which equals square root of 20 can be broken down into 4 times 5. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5. Well, square root of 20 we know is not 3, right? So this vector does not have a magnitude of 3. The vector has a magnitude of 2 times the square root of 5, which is not 3. So I want to find the vector that, ha that has the same direction as this vector, but has a magnitude of 3. So what we need to do is find the unit vector, because what's going to happen is if we find the unit vector, that means that vector has a magnitude of 1. Then all we need to do is take that unit vector and multiply it by its magnitude to get it to have a um, magnitude of 3. So if we find the unit vector, we just need to multiply by the new magnitude, and then we can find out what that vector is with a magnitude of 3. So just like in our last problem as far as finding the unit vectors, the first thing we're going to want to do is find the unit vector. So we're going to find the, the um, let's actually just call these all w. What we're going to first do, first do is find the magnitude of our given vector. Then we're going to find the unit vector. So instead of um, v, we're now using w. Okay. So the unit vector is going to be w. So we have magnitude. So now I'll just say say mu is equal to um, four comma negative two divided by this new magnitude, which is 2 square root of 5. I'm going to distribute and simplify. So my new vector is going to be that reduces down to uh, 2 over square root of 5. And this goes to negative 1 over the square root of 5. OK, so that's my unit vector. However, I'm not trying to find the unit vector. I'm trying to find the vector v that has a magnitude of 3. So v is going to equal 3 times this vector times this unit vector. Then all I'm simply going to do is apply my operations with scalars, and I get my final vector v, which is 6 over the square root of 5, comma, negative 3 over the square root of 5. Done. OK, so in this next example, again, we want to find the unit vector. So to do that, I'm going to first find the magnitude. So square my uh, first component plus squaring my second component. And 1 squared is 1, plus negative 1 squared is 1, so that's going to be plus 2. OK, I can't simplify that anymore. Let's go ahead and find the unit vector u. So the unit vector is going to be my w, which is this vector, 1 over negative 1 over my magnitude. Simplify that. u is 1 over the square root of 2, comma, negative 1 over the square root of 2. Now, to find my vector v, I want, instead of it having a magnitude of 1, I want it to have a magnitude of 2. So vector v is equal to 2 times my unit vector. Then I just distribute my scalar, and I get a final unit vector, which should hopefully be a little bit familiar with you. You guys have probably seen uh, this coordinate point. It's on the unit circle, right? And we know points on the unit circle have a magnitude of 1, so that kind of verifies it, this for us. All right, in the, last, in the next example, um, now we have a vector that is in linear combination. But again, guys, you know, when you're dealing with something in linear combination, I just like to write it in component form. So therefore, I'm just basically doing the exact same operations. So magnitude of w is going to be 8 squared plus negative 6 squared. So that becomes 
64 plus 36, which equals square root of 100, which equals 10. Then I'm going to basically take my vector, uh, da, 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 my unit vector, which is going to equal the component form, 8 comma negative 6, divided by my magnitude. I'm going to simplify this. So I do 8 divided by 10, which is going to be 4 fifths. And then I'm going to multiply negative 6 over 10, which is going to be negative 3 fifths. Now, to find my vector v, I'm basically just going to be multiplying that by my new scalar, which is 3 halves, 4 fifths, comma, negative 3 fifths. Okay, and just remember now, scale is a fraction, but that's okay. Remember when you're multiplying fractions, multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and I get. Let's see, 12 over 10, comma, negative 9 over 10. And I can simplify the top um, to give me 6 fifths. So my final vector is going to be 6 fifths, comma, negative 9 over 10. And I'll circle that so we know the correct answer. OK, in the last example, just like kind of um, what we did in unit vectors is I'm going to actually going to avoid some math. And I'm just going to look at this graphically to make sense of it. I have my original vector 2j, which is j is going up and down. Remember, that's my unit vector j. So 2j is right up here. Initial point, terminal point. Now, all I want to do is have the same vector with the exact same direction, but have a magnitude of 4. Well, then all I need to do is go 1, 2, 3, 4. I just need to increase that vector up to 4. Well, rather than going down to the unit vector and multiplying it by 4, this vector we know is just 4j. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find a vector with a given magnitude by finding the unit vector first. Thanks.